Hi there. Welcome back to another episode of The Calling Uncensored. I'm here with Tamara Arnold. I'm really, really excited to have her on the show. She is an international best-selling author and CEO and founder of the Chakra Mastery Academy, which I can personally attest to because I met Tamara a few years ago where I was actually um, a student in her course. So I'm really excited and grateful uh, to have her on the show. And I'm just going to dive right in. You guys know we like to just flow organically over here and let spirit lead the conversation. So I'm going to let Tamara jump in and explain a little bit about who she is and we'll just see where it goes. I love, I love these questions of like, who is Tamara? Tamara is first and foremost, I think the most fascinating piece is I will always identify as being a human in this 3D world going through, um, I think the spiritual journey of truthfully taking the ability to be in this consciousness and be in this space of enlightenment and bring it into our bodies. Because I think that currently what's going on in the world is that we're all striving for the awakening and the enlightenment, but the real, the real deal, like the real power right now is to actually embody that and be able to share it through the experiences that we have and the emotions that we have with others. But on top of that, I mean, I'm a mom and an author and a coach and a lover and a learner and an emotionally charged human <laughs> that <laughs> triggered all the time and has so much work to do and it's never ending. Yeah. So um, why don't you just take us back a little bit about your own transformation or spiritual awakening process and what, what kind of things you, do you feel like you might be able to share with the audience? I know like, um, like you said, like triggering is part of the process. Like it's not, you know, rainbows and butterflies. There's a lot of, you know, stripping away of everything, uh, the false self and coming into soul alignment. Um, and listeners to this podcast are at all different levels of their journey. So what, uh, maybe just intuitively go back to wherever you feel called to talk about your journey. Well, it's interesting is I'm being called to go back to being 10. And so I grew up around mental illness. Like that was just, you know, what my journey, what I chose to come into. And so I was very, very sensitive child, um, heightened emotions, heightened sensitivities. I, you know, I don't know if anyone listening has ever been told to like, oh, you can cry on demand. You're too sensitive. You're all these things. And I started to think of that as being negative. And when my mom got really sick when I was 10, I remember thinking in my head to shelf this part of myself to be in support of her. Mm -hmm. And so that started a whole other path of codependency and journeying. And, you know, I'm a, you know, the, by the time I was 17, I, I couldn't take care of my mom anymore. I went on a rotary exchange to Brazil, came back, was overwhelmed again, and wanted to run from mental illness. And so I moved out with a man and got pregnant uh, five months after I lost my virginity when I was 19 years old and had my son when I was 20. And this is a really powerful part of the story and the journey for me because I was running from mental illness. Like that was the whole purpose that I secretly wanted this baby. And yet I was looking for the unconditional love that like I wanted a love that didn't have any expectations on me that I could create and mold to be whatever it is that I wanted love to be. Like I had some control over that or something. Mm -hmm. And then my son ended up having mental illness. And that was the journey that I was meant to take to the point where he was 16. I asked him to leave the house and by 17, I stopped talking to him altogether. And that was the hardest thing that I'd ever done in my life. Like what mother stops talking to their child? Like my first book is about this journey because what that did was it broke a pattern. And I believe fully that this wasn't just our generational pattern. Like this is a generational ancestral pattern that's been running in my family for years. So the intensity in which I felt this breakup was so fierce. It drove me into depression because again, I felt like moms with pitchforks were going to come to my door and like be really angry with me. But what it offered me was a reconnection to self because there will be a memory embedded in my mind forever. When I walked into my living room and I just stopped, I stopped and I was like, 
oh my God, I didn't know who I was anymore because I was always the daughter of a mom who had mental illness and then a mother to a son who had mental illness. And somewhere along that, that journey, I lost who I was completely. And so I remember that being the scariest moment of my life. Because when you don't have those other people to codependently be caring for, mm -hmm. you're forced to face your own inner demons and you're forced to face your own thoughts, feelings, and emotions. And so as I was in this depression, I started to just simply ask one question a day, which would be like, what can I do today to feel just a little bit better than the day before? And I would receive an answer, which now I know is spirit, but at the time I would just be like, <laughs> have a bath, probably a good, yeah, huh? a good idea. I haven't done that in a while <laughs> or, you know, go for a walk, make a therapy appointment, do all of these things. And that one thing I would consider myself successful over. I'd be like, good job, Tamara, you do, you had a great day. And then I'd curl back up in the fetal position. Um, but eventually that led me to meditation mm -hmm. and I started meditating sleeping through every meditation for at least a month, you guys. Like I'm talking like voice would start, sleep, come back into your body, I'd wake up. And then I just, but something felt like it was happening. And so if you're in this part of the journey of bringing in your subconscious mind, and sometimes the things that we're meant to deal with are so much bigger than our conscious minds can even begin to accept or acknowledge or work through. And I was processing and I was doing deep work at the soul level and at the subconscious level that my, my body and my brain just couldn't keep up with mm -hmm. until it could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I started to get guidance in my meditations. Like my grandfather would come visit me or even my exes, like my son's father would come visit people who had passed angels, all of these like spiritual guidance and I was like that's cool that's nice look at all these. <laughs> this is like really nice and then one day I was like oh my god that's real like that's what's actually real is all these messages that I'm getting in these meditations and the minute that I knew that for my truth mm -hmm. I started to receive the messaging while I was awake mm -hmm. And so the voices began to talk to me and the guidance started to happen to me while I was awake. And the truth is, I actually thought maybe with my family history, something was wrong. So I did book a therapy appointment and be like, okay, I'm totally hearing voices. <laughs> Am I okay? Should I be worried? <laughs> and my therapist was like somebody who is very spiritual. And she actually introduced me to A Course in Miracles and she became the mentor who appeared when you need them because i had been seeing her for 23 years and she'd never mentioned anything along the lines that she coached in this or held this capacity to serve in this means but the minute i was ready for it she showed up in that version of herself for me so that yeah. was really cool oh i love that yeah there's a that phase in your journey where the mentor appears mm -hmm. very interesting oh my god your story is so and so then so it so when did you start to open up to hearing spirit and seeing spirit and things like that was it specifically after was this you said you've been empathic your whole life so when you were you when you were a child were you also like a teenager or an adolescent were you receiving this kind of information i called myself an undiagnosed empath because i had no idea what was happening right so like i can look back and see that my mom and my sister and everybody in my family they're, they're highly empathetic and they're highly intuitive but they didn't know how to work with that so they medicated as a means to like numb or suffocate what is our greatest gift so i did the same thing right i only had that to to witness and so but i remember being in high school and thinking everybody hated me so i'd be walking down the hall looking down and i would just feel anger and wrath and like all these emotions because high schoolers don't have happy thoughts generally we're like going through all our shit during that time but i thought it was all directed at me mm. i thought like i didn't have that understanding that so like i was going through life i couldn't keep jobs as soon as somebody didn't like me or as soon as the atmosphere of the the job became toxic or, or something i couldn't handle i just knew to quit i didn't know why I got into fitness in my early 20s. I started teaching fitness classes, became a personal trainer because I could, I could be in that space. Mm -hmm. People go to a gym to feel you know, happy and joy. So I didn't realize that I was guiding by the fact that I was an undiagnosed empath. And it wasn't until I had my spiritual awakening after Ethan and I broke up that it kind of all looking back made sense where I could put the dots together and go like, oh yeah, 
that's what I am. Like it was to the point where I would go out for groceries and come home and have to put my groceries on the table and go have a nap. Yeah. Because I, right. Like I had to, and I had no idea what was happening. Yeah. That's interesting. I went through a phase like that during my spiritual awakening where I opened up really like I, I couldn't go to the gas station or any place without getting like, I would, I remember getting like sharp shooting pains towards my solar plexus chakra, like warning, like fight or flight, like get out, you know, like fearful, like, holy shit. You know what I mean? Like, um, and it was before I really knew what was happening and I didn't know how to protect my energy. And I was just on a call with someone recently who was talking about that. So maybe you can share for all of the empaths that are listening to this, because I've since then met several on my spiritual journey that like you said, couldn't even go to the grocery store and things like that. And they've been living their whole life. They finally started to wake up to the fact that they were an empath in their like forties and fifties, but they spent like the better part of their life, like being a hermit or not being able to survive social situations. Um, as, as just simple as going to the grocery store, let alone enjoying a concert or going any place like that. But, um, what kind of energy clearing or energy protection techniques have you learned? since well, it's so interesting because I always say like as, when we're an empath and we're not acknowledging it because you know you're like deep down we know that we're empaths but we're like no 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 I don't want to be an empath I'm going to have that label and like when we are not owning that gift it owns us first and foremost so the first phase of this is just acknowledging you know what I am an empath <laughs> stake your flag in the hill and be like great, now I'm an empowered empath because I'm owning this part of myself and I'm celebrating it and I'm going to learn what the tools I have and the gifts that I have, how they empower myself and others into their own greatness. So that's really important. Second is I had to play around. I did a whole podcast episode on this myself because there's so many different ways and we can't be somebody else's version of protection. And so I could list, I would even say right now, I'll list like four of them or five of them and to just embody it. Just like let your body tell you which is your way of protecting. So it's interesting because we're going through the COVID-19 right now, but like washing, cleansing, like having showers, washing hands is a great way to clear energy. Um, so you can imagine like energy at the end of the day, if you shower or bath every day, it's just washing away energy that doesn't belong to you. Same thing as when you come in from grocery stores or events, washing your hands and just releasing the energy out that way. Mm -hmm. I always call it the permeable cell is another way. Cause I always say you don't want to encase yourself in some sort of hard encrusted cell that doesn't allow good emotion through. But if you imagine yourself, I always think of like a cell in the body. Be, right it only absorbs that in which is of its highest good it knows what's right for it and what isn't mm -hmm. and so you can place yourself in this protective bubble but make it so that love and joy and bliss and happiness and you know kindness and all of these really high energy emotions can come in mm -hmm. also allowing you to, to express whatever emotion that you want out so you're not self-containing yourself mm -hmm. and but protecting yourself from anything that is not of you Mm -hmm. um, my, what I use personally is I want to be on all the time as an empath. I would never want to turn off of my gift because it's my livelihood. It's my business. And so I imagine being a tuner dial, mm -hmm. and so, like the old school tuners on the receivers. Mm -hmm. So when I'm talking to somebody and I want to actually open up and receive more of their emotion, more of the feelings and the sensations, I just volume dial up. Mm -hmm. And then I volume dial down. If I'm in a big crowd, I imagine like the whole system in a sound booth where everybody has their own dial. Mm. And so I can independently pick a dial and just choose to increase the one person that I'm talking to and leave everybody else's dials down on low. And so that's working for me. And mm. then the last one that's coming through is if you've ever watched, so I'm a big fantasy nerd, anything that has to do with fantasy movies or fantasy books, probably I've read it or seen it. It's really hard because like you get obsessed in Netflix and you run out of shows eventually. But in The Kingsman, <laughs> the movie called The Kingsman, which is like a secret service, you can imagine having an item or a totem that protects you from other things. So they had this magical umbrella that they could put, pop open and they could take bullets and they could take anything and it wouldn't come through to them, right? But you can hold a crystal or um, you know, give that energy to something else that will protect you and, and keep your energy and the emotional state to you without taking in anybody else's. 
Yeah, I love that. And then um, I do a lot of those same things. I always like envision an energetic, like a, like the energetic shower, um, recognizing that I'm cleansing my energy body, not just my physical body. Um, I'm always cleansing my space. I just had a, a feng shui and a house blessing just uh, literally about an hour before this session. Um, so a lot I feel, if you're listening to this, is through the power of intention. Mm -hmm. like being able to set the intention of what, uh, you know, visualizing, like you said, visualizing that I love your dial. I might have to borrow that one. That one's good. Um, but yeah, so I, I learned to protect my energy as well through this, like through this process of working through working with the power of intention and recognizing that I could be more in control of it. Um, but like you said, not being strict and rigid and fearful of it because you don't want to like be hardening yourself off from your gift and from really feeling and receiving all that life has to offer because you're like having to feel like you need to close off from the world. So being able to open up to receive is so important and hold space for all of the good things that you want to come to you. But recognizing that, you know, you can draw that energetic line, so to speak, and separate your, you know, to keep your, I don't know, your energy bubble, your aura a little, you know, cleaner, right? Can I share something that's coming through right now? Sure. Because you're talking about receiving. And I want to talk about how spirit talks a little bit, if, if you're open to that. Oh, like, yeah. The messaging that I would get through was always like, when spirit talks to me, it always tells me to do something of my highest good, but it's hella uncomfortable and oftentimes not something that you want to do, right? So like, it would be like, you're going to do this. And I'm like, what, pardon? <laughs> like, pardon? Are you talking to me? Did you choose the right human? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't like, they were like, make an intention card deck. And I was like, but I, what? Like, I've never made a deck or create a coloring agenda or like, you know what I mean? Like guiding me into my path of service in the beginning but oftentimes you're going to receive something like that and you have to be willing to understand that you know when service like when spirit's speaking they're gonna they're gonna ask you to rise mm -hmm. and it's gonna feel like you're gonna want to say no spirit this is too big for me or this is too much for me or this is like you know i don't know if i'm ready or this calling is like a big deal and just listen like so i always say like i call it the spiritual launch receive the information and take immediate action on whatever that receive is because that is the receive of the highest good oh my god i love that yeah i call that the you know magician marketing being able to act on that energy in the moment and receive it it's so good i love it <laughs> oh good it's like when my gift came in yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Let's talk about your gift for sure. Like the, you, like, so now you started to open up to spirit. What talk about, yeah. How, I don't want to interrupt how your gift came in and how you recognize that, how you, you know, that whole process moving forward with actually recognizing that this is what you can do um, to help people and stepping onto that path. Right. So like through that depression meditation and starting to hear spirit, starting to receive the message, taking action on everything I was receiving, um, openly came out of the spiritual closet, which is probably one of the hardest things you do. Um, that's what I think a real, like true, I have the group called Rebel Unicorns. Like that's that ownership of your gift, like really declaring like, you know, I don't follow societal's normal <laughs> like plan. I do hear voices. Yes, angels talk to me. Like nothing bad's going to happen just because these, this is my truth now. And I was in the so I, I got the message to do the deck and the cards and this, and I was leaving the bathroom. I was blow drying my hair because, you know, everything is super normal with spirit too. There's no like firecrackers or like, it's always in the present moment. That's when spirit is the most, you know, with you. And I was just kind of blow drying my hair and I'm leaving the bathroom and they were like, you can read chakras. And I was like, whoa, what are you talking about? Like, I don't even know anything about chakras. And they're like, you can read chakras. And I was like, I literally said, you have the wrong human. <laughs> and they're like, no. And I'm like, but I don't even know the colors or the symbols. I cannot be the person who's meant to do this. And they said, we will guide you. And this is that spiritual launch taking action. I just went right to my computer, opened it up, dialed into Facebook and went, apparently I can read chakras, everybody. Is anyone open to allowing me to practice on them? And, you know, four people said yes. One was a person I knew. A couple were like in different countries. And I was just like, Oh, what have I done? Like, what is, what is this, this 
I love that. I love that. You're just like, apparently I can read chakras. Yep. And then you go into trust, right? They said that they would guide me pull up because I didn't have any fancy tools or anything to have these phone calls. I didn't have international like phone calling capabilities. So, you know, Facebook messenger became my, my tool in which I began these relationships. And I remember just lying on my bed with my phone on my chest and just going like, okay, I dial up these people and say like, we're just going to go. And again, I had no previous information about chakras. What I now know is that I wasn't meant to because the information that I was meant to download to be in service to my community, collective and tribe needed to come in without having any preconceived knowledge so that I could be of a higher service. Right. Right. And so like, as I was going through human after human, because once I started and people were like, whoa, how did you know that? Or how did you feel that? Or how can you even see where I'd be like, I see a bird on a tree in like this wall. And they'd be like, okay, that's really weird because I have a painting on my wall behind me that has a, a bird in it. Right. And they'd be like, how can you see that? And I'm like, I don't know. I just can't. <laughs> and it was like this practice being willing to not know like that was that that was the most important part for me in the beginning of my gift is the practicing like being open to saying i'm still practicing in case i got it wrong <laughs> not being like yeah i'm the champion of all chakra readers it was like i just wanted to keep practicing to gather that freedom to to fail freedom to like make mistakes but still i was like hungry to learn more. I just wanted to be in all the human bodies and learn the patterns and, and the way that spirit was asking me and calling me up to being, you know, the actual person who could support people in the challenges and the resistance in each of the seven floors. Hmm. That's so crazy. I love it. So, um, so do you primarily, you said, you said before, I think you mentioned this, you, you hear, you, when you're reading someone's chakras, you can hear information or see information or feel it. So your clear, your clairs are all, all your clairs are open um, when you're reading chakras or? Yeah, so the gift that I have is, is like, I would consider myself clairvoyant and clairsentient Tamara the human, right? That's because I can feel. But when I merge energy with whoever it is that I'm supporting or working with, I become their clairs, like whatever they are, because I, I always say, you know, my body, like your energy uses my body to speak back to you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say like analogies that I might not normally say. I'm going to speak. I'm going to call terms and references and all sorts of things that I don't know or explain and, and use those when I'm in those energy readings, because that's what your energy is asking to hear. And if you, if you're clear audience, I will, I'll be like, I hear this, I hear this. If you are, you know, uh, where we would like visual, I don't even know which one's coming through here. Then I'm going to see, like, I'll see patterns on the wall. I'll see images. Um, sometimes I can smell. It just fully depends on the energy of the person, what their intuition is. I reflect back to them. And so what kind of practice do you use? Do you have a practice to cultivate your ability to channel and be this vessel for energy? Do you have any, you know, energetic practices or whatever to stay to completely be open to receiving this information is it just on all the time is it no it's, it's two parts right like it's devotional right like it's just like god use my body in the greatest way that you possibly can to for me to be of highest service and i do practice it right like i practice it so i stopped doing full like you can people can now um, I was giving a lot of chakra readings away for free. Now it's a, it's a paid service because I could just, you, you could really drown yourself in a day energetically, just supporting others. Um, and so I, I do the paid readings, which is still the practice. And now in the Rebel Unicorns group, because I was like, I want to do more. Like, I just, I love it. I thrive in it. Like, mm -hmm. and so I have tea and tarot on Tuesdays now where I, people can pop in and I can just sit there pull a card, do a, a spot chop. Like this is what's going on in your energy system right there. And that actually feels super amazingly fun for me. Mm -hmm. uh, when I can just go from person to person, it's, it's challenging. And it's, it's like, it, it forces me to grow even more. It's not just doing one person for a select number of time. It's like you're cutting cores in between each person and you have to like call into their energy and jump in and out and do all these kinds of things. And I'm like, Oh, it just gets me all fired up. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, 
So rebel unicorns, is that like, um, so explain what that is, who you're, who you feel if for, for, for people listening, um, if they're feeling connected with you, um, who is your ultimate, describe what a rebel unicorn means to them, you know, in general and who you're here to serve at the highest level. Absolutely. It's empaths, healers, light workers, highly sensitive po folk, because we don't fit the mold. We don't fit and conform to society's like status quo checklist, right? We can't necessarily can't work in environments and we have to like tend to want to be self-employed and entrepreneurs and like, you know, we have big missions to uphold. And so I call a rebel unicorn, anyone who is willing to release the attachment to the status quo societal like norms and step fully into their power and their knowing and their truth and declare it out into the world, even if it is not necessarily the most accepted thing in the land. Like, yo, I talk to dead people. That's right. You, you are a rebel unicorn. Like, I feel other people's emotions. I talk to plants and trees. You are a rebel unicorn. <laughs> own that and declare that out. Yes, you are. That's what I call a rebel unicorn. <laughs> and your international best-selling book. Tell us a little bit about that. So it's interesting because the first book, there's like a little journey. Like when you get so far and you're willing to turn around and like bring the person that is slightly behind you to where you are, that's what I look at these three books that I've written. And then the next one's going to be even bigger, right? So the first one's My Kid is Driving Me Crazy, A Mom's Survival Guide for Living with a Child with Mental Illness. And it's a story of finding yourself when you don't know who you are anymore. So it could be the codependency of having you know, an alcoholic partner or, you know, a family, but it's just that journey of becoming yourself again. Who am I? What do I love? What are my likes? Like, I remember doing this, it's in the book where I was asked to do, and you did it when you worked with me, 50 things you love to do that's not tied to anybody else. You're not doing it, you know, just because it's for your children or your partner, but like, what are 50 things you love to do for you? And I, I remember having to write that list because I was in a program, I mean, like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I love to do anymore. So that's the journey of coming back into who you are. The second book, The, Mag the Magical Business Method, is now building a business based on your own energetic body, like clearing out shit that isn't serving you in your chakras, and then infusing your stardust, which we all have. Like we came to earth to create as a creator created us. Like we came with a piece of stardust, as I like to call it, in your heart. So you activate that knowing, you activate that truth, clear out each floor of the chakra and just infuse yourself into the aligned space of being in service. And then the last one, which is really great that it came out not that long ago with what's going on in the world, because it's called the blind leap. Ditch the nine to five for the business of your dreams. <laughs> We're all home right now. So, you know, there's opportunity. So the but blind leap is that that's the name of it. The blind leap. But, but it's making your body, your office. Mm. So that's the premise of the book, right? It's really still about you, the human being, you know, your meditation in the morning is like hiring a cleaner to come in mm -hmm. and clean the office space and like taking care of you and why, like you're the CEO and the first employee. If you're not talking nice to each other, is anyone going to want to come into the building? No, <laughs> right? Like so. <laughs> the next one will be the shocker codes, which will be in a very, very in-depth about chakra mastery. Wow, I love that. So since you started um, your own practice with the chakras, knowing nothing about them when you started, after that, have you studied or researched chakras or you've come into knowledge about the chakras since then or do you not, um, is it all self-taught or have you gone back over and learned what some of the other chakras now mean? I, information falls in my lap all the time. Do I seek it out? No. I trust that, you know, wherever spirit guides me to and whatever they ask me to learn or to step into is what I lean into. Um, but what they, they prefer me um, to do more of is learning devotional practices. Like, um, so it is the connection to source energy. It is releasing we talked about this before we jump on the attachments and all the different parts which tie into each of the chakras. So like my work is to deepen my own work in my chakras to serve at a higher level through my clients 
So I have to go in there, each one, I can tell you which one I'm working on, how, what I'm unpacking so that I can hold a better container for my own clients when they're going through the same thing mm -hmm. in their spaces. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So why don't you share where everybody can find you? I know you're very active on Facebook because I follow you on Facebook, obviously, and I see you popping in there with your live streams, but where's the best place? Where do you hang out the most online if people want to connect with you and see more about what you're up to? So anything with Tamara Arnold, just put my name in. If you Google me, I'm like seven pages on Google. <laughs> so I can't explain. It will drive you to all my places, but um, I love interaction. Human connection is everything. So if you go to my website, TamaraArnold.ca for Canada, it will take you to all the social media platforms. It will take you to Instagram, Facebook, which I play in all the time. Insta stories, okay, super fun. That's like, to me, that's like opening people's junk drawers <laughs> in their houses. It's like we have a bird's eye view into everybody's life. I'm like, oh my God, reality TV, like 3D. <laughs> it's all the time. <laughs> And so email me on there, like, just let's, let's be friends. <laughs> Do you have um, any free offer or any way that they can like get some sort of any kind of giveaway or gift anything? a copy of the magical business method? Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Where can they get that? And I'll be dropping the URLs for this all in the show notes as well. But where do they get a copy of that? I'm going to, I'm going to totally get the URL wrong. Okay. You can, I look in the show notes, but it's probably Tamara Arnold.ca slash okay. book or the magical business method. It'll be one of those two things, but you'll have a downloadable copy of the book directly to your inbox. And I'm super excited because I just changed how it arrives. Like the, when you get the email that the book comes in, oh, the, you read the book, I'm super jazzed about the email that you get. <laughs> Yes, you got some really exciting digital delivery going on for you guys once you do that. <laughs> so perfect. I'm, just, I'm that kind of nerd <laughs> that I get excited about adding a gift to my email. Yeah, I love that. I love it. I, I love spiritual entrepreneurship. I love the entrepreneurship journey in general. Just I feel like it truly is a test, the ultimate test of, you know, on so many different levels, testing your courage, your faith, you know. Um, it's just the greatest journey to be on, I feel, as far as a career path goes. For me, I'm a little biased, but most of the women that are listening to this, tuning into this, are stepping into that path of wanting to take their gift to the next level. So if that's something, you know, if Tamara's resonating with you, I would highly encourage you to check out her website. I've personally worked with her and can vouch for her gift. It's amazing. I think you're so badass. I just love you. <laughs> Oh, it was nice catching up. I'm so excited that, that you were able to make it on the show and we could chat. This is really, I think, going to help a lot of people listening to your story. Thank you so much for having me. And I look forward to connecting with everybody. All right, you guys. All right, you guys. Um, thanks for tuning in. And um, I will see you again on the next episode. Namaste. If you got value from this episode, please subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And I'd love it if you leave me a review on iTunes. For more info beyond this podcast, or if you have a question you'd like answered in an upcoming episode, please visit thecallinguncensored.com. And for daily inspiration or to shoot me a DM, come hang with me on Instagram at spiritualceo. Namaste.